Welcome oh, to Uza. Young. Storyteller. Bob. Hi, everyone. My name is Elise, and I'm so happy to see you again this week. Hi, everybody. My name is Madeline, and I'm so excited for our lesson. Hello, I'm Cleo, and it's so fun to be with you all here today. Hi everyone, we are so glad that you are back for this week's lesson. Last week, we talked about conflict resolution and the importance of learning how to deal with a conflict with a specific individual or a group of people. We're continuing our stories with our characters this week, but our scenarios will be a little different than last week. In preparation for this week's scenario, we're going to talk about coping mechanisms. Our scenario is going to be taking place at the lakeside, and all of our characters are having a picnic. This week, we are all going to talk about a very meaningful subject by discussing what coping mechanisms are. We will have a scenario example and talk about some meaningful ways that you can all deal with trauma. We will also have some fun questions for you all to answer to. So let's briefly reintroduce our characters again. So my character's name is Mauro. He's 11 years old, and whenever he feels bad, he becomes invisible. So he doesn't have a lot of self-control yet over his superpower. He doesn't see very well, but he loves colorful art. Uh, Clarion is my character and is 14 years old. Instead of he or she, Clarion prefers using they to refer to themselves. Their special power allows them to manipulate minds, but Clarion doesn't like to use it. They'll only use it at the most desperate times to help others. My character's name is Sage, and she is 16 years old. She is from Chicago. Her father was a superhero, and her special power is to know when people are going to do bad things that can harm others. Her role is to help prevent those things from happening to save the day and the world. Jojo is the name of my character. She's 17 years old, and her superpower is that no one can say no to her. This allows her to get what she wants in order to fix the situation. In previous lessons, we have talked about the background of the story, the setting, character development, the components of a story, com and conflict resolution. Today's lesson will be on coping skills. It's important to note that conflict resolution and coping skills can be related. After a conflict with someone, it's good to put different types of coping mechanisms into practice and to think about what had happened. So if you're feeling angry or sad or dissatisfied, it's important to deal with those emotions and not to just ignore them. So we're going to talk about coping strategies using the picture that illustrates a number of ways that can be helpful, helpful to deal with our emotions. Let's start with some strategies that directly help you deal with some emotions. The first one seems really simple, but can be quite powerful. Label the feeling. Um, actually, it sounds simple, but sometimes that can be pretty hard. Because uh, sometimes I'll think that I'm feeling angry, but actually it's more subtle than that. For example, the other day, I wasn't really angry. It was more accurate to say that I was frustrated. Right. So labeling what you are feeling can help you yourself figure out what exactly you are feeling. And it also helps others around you know how you are feeling. If you turn really quiet, other people might know that you are sad or angry or maybe just distracted or tired. Another strategy that is directly related to emotions is to do a breathing exercise. This can be a really simple exercise like breathing in deeply through the, through the nose and then blowing out slowly through your mouth. Actually, when I was a kid, my mom taught me that one. She called it the pizza breath. So first, I would pretend to smell the pizza to help me remember to breathe in deeply through my nose. And then I would blow on the pizza to cool it off to help me to remember to breathe out through my mouth. <laughs> Um, I really like that. So can we all practice a pizza breath together? All right, yeah. Let's breathe in through our nose to smell the pizza. And then let's blow it out through the mouth to cool the pizza. 
So why is it helpful to take a couple of deep breaths like that? It helps you get back into your body and to take a couple of seconds before doing something else. So that can be really helpful because it might prevent you from saying something mean while you're angry that you might regret later. Right, that makes sense. Okay, so the next three strategies have less to do with emotions and more to do with just taking a break to focus on, to focus on something else. One of these uh, reading is actually pretty related to our whole topic of stories. Yeah, so in this case, stories can provide a fun distraction. They can help you take a step back from whatever is going on in your life. And often, once you put the book down, you might feel a lot calmer and more able to deal with whatever was going on. Yeah, similar, something similar is playing a game because it could be a really helpful distraction. Um, distraction strategies like these are particularly helpful when something has already happened and you can't really change anything anymore, but your thoughts keep spinning around in circles in your head and you can't just, you just can't stop thinking about it. I remember once I got a really, really low grade on a test and I was so upset with myself. It's like you said, I just couldn't stop thinking about it. Yeah, that's exactly the type of situation where doing something fun and social as a distraction, like playing a game with a friend, can be a really good idea. Another way to distract yourself and give yourself a break from what's going on can, to be, can be to create some art. And unlike reading a book, creating art is a bit more active. Sometimes you can even put your feelings into the art you're making. When I was younger, I would sometimes be really sad, and I would write these poems about how I was feeling. Oh, wow. Um, how about the next one, then? Uh, doing yoga. How does that help? Actually, research has shown that yoga helps people relax and can give you a better mood. Wait, I don't know what yoga is. C can, can someone explain? When you do yoga, you move your body in time with your breath. So you might rise up your arms as you inhale and bring them down as you exhale. So it can kind of be a combined breathing exercise with body exercises. Yeah, and you can do like very gentle, calm yoga focused on stretching, or you can do pretty hard yoga, which makes you sweat and builds your muscles. There's a ton of free online yoga videos on the internet, even for kids. What about exercising in general? That's not on the poster, but I think it's a good coping strategy. Yeah, definitely. Any exercise is healthy, not just for your body, but also for your mind. When you exercise, your body creates endorphins. That's a difficult word, but endorphins just means a chemical in your brain that helps you deal with like stress and pain. And even taking a walk outside can count as healthy exercise. You don't have to get all study, sweaty to have positive effects. Actually, speaking of that, I have another coping strategy that isn't on this poster. For me, being outside always helps. I don't know if it's the fresh air or being around nature, but just going outside can help me feel a lot better. Okay, um, let's talk about the final idea that's on this poster, self-talk. What does that mean? Does it mean just standing in front of a mirror and saying, I am great? I think maybe it means talking to yourself in your head like you would talk to a friend. So, um, for example, um, whenever I get a bad grade, I tend to like say to myself like, wow, I am so dumb. But I would never say that to a friend if they got a bad grade. Right, so positive self-talk can be trying to talk to yourself like you would talk to a friend. A lot of us can have an easier time being kind and compassionate to a friend than always to ourselves. Yeah, that's true. Uh, okay, so those are the strategies that are on the poster, but there are, of course, many strategies too, many more. Yeah, like what about watching a fun movie or dancing? I like to listen to music when I'm struggling with my feelings. Or what about asking someone for help? Sometimes, a problem can be hard to deal with on your own, and it can help to have someone to talk to. After my dad passed away two years ago, I started therapy, so I would talk with someone about my feelings every week, and it really helped. 
Right. The strategies on this poster and that we discussed are just some ideas, but there are many other things you can do that can help you feel better or just process your emotions too. Generally, it's helpful to know what works for you. So maybe listening to music helps for Madeline, but it doesn't really help me. I do better like reading a book or doing some breathing exercises. Yeah, every person is different for what helps them. And also, I think it, it can depend on the situation. So if you're in the middle of an argument with someone, you can't just start playing a game to help with the feelings that you're, that you're feeling in this particular situation. In that case, taking some deep breaths and labeling your feelings might be a little bit more helpful. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, what about um, everyone watching this video? Why don't you take a minute pause the video and write down some strategies that are helpful for you. See if you, ha if you like any of the strategies we just discussed or if you can come up with some new ones that we didn't say. Okay, so pause now and list some things and we would love to hear from you what you came up with. Okay, let's continue with the rest of today's lesson and let's get on to our scenario. Today, our characters all decided to get, get together for a potluck. That means they all promise to bring each other some food to share. Also, we don't know when you are watching this, but for our characters, it's early fall and it's a beautiful, warm September day when they get together by the side of the lake. Gosh, that sounds so perfect for a picnic. What type of food did everyone bring? Actually, why don't we all take a minute? You as well, if you're watching. Think about what type of food your character would bring to a potluck and if that food means anything special to them. Let's take a minute. Is everyone ready? Did every, if everyone think of some things? Yep. Sounds yep. good. Perfect. Okay. Then how about we set the scene? Um, the mentor characters are all very glad that everyone came to the picnic and are really excited to try all the different foods that people brought. Um, as everyone settles down, we all present what we brought one at a time so that everyone can appreciate what the food means to the person that wanted to share it with everyone. Okay, so I can start. Mauro is a bit young to really cook and bring a dish. So he volunteered to bring snacks. He went with Skittles because they're fun and colorful. And also because there's always way too much food at potlucks so he figured that a small snack would be plenty. Love that. <laughs> Jojo brought her mom's famous cr cranberry relish. It was her first time making it alone, but it turned out surprisingly well. This dish is particularly special to Jojo because when she first discovered her superpower and enrolled in the school for kids with superpowers, her mom made the relish for the first time. Jojo was hooked on it, and from that point on, she used her superpower and was able to convince her mom to make it for her nearly every week for dinner. <gasps> wow. <laughs> um, Clarion brought some nice, refreshing shaved ice. So that would be this photo or this first one in the middle. Um, it's put on top of some coconut juice and topped with fruits and jellies that would be eaten along with it as a nice, cool treat for the fall day. This was something that Clarion's family would make for everyone on really long, hot days to rehydrate everyone. Sage brings gumbo as the main dish for everyone. It is a southern seafood soup, which was her favorite dish that her father made. It reminds her of her dad because they would go fishing on the lake for the seafood and then prepare it together once they got home. It's absolutely delicious and, and satisfying. Thinking of her father brings up some guilty and nostalgic feelings. So Sage decides to discuss this with the group in hopes for, for others who are watching this video to contribute how their dishes connect to their past and how it has impacted their lives today. 
Everyone was very touched that Sage wanted to share a dish that was so close to her heart with everyone. As everyone shared why they brought the dish they did, everyone came to appreciate the food in a much deeper way. Yeah. Um, as everyone enjoyed the food, Clarion spoke up. Uh, how is everyone feeling? Right now, I'm very grateful that we can talk to each other. Listening to Sage's story really let me appreciate how close we have all become and how much each of us have, has gone through. But no matter how, how hard things were, we're all here right now with some delicious food, right? Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, Mauro has a story to share. Um, he actually, he's very new to the school and he had a really bad experience on that, that first day at the school for kids with special powers. So his name, Mauro, is actually short for Mauritz, which is also his father's name. However, his father abused him and his mom and sisters, and, and thankfully he left when Mauro was pretty young. But whenever Mauro needs to say his own full name for official stuff, like getting enrolled at a new school, it's so painful for him to be confronted with his dad's name. How did Mauro handle having to deal with that on the first day of school? Because the first day of school could be scary enough without having to deal with an extra emotional baggage like that. Yeah, so Mauro is pretty used to the feelings that come up around his full name and his dad, like anger, sadness, and even like shame that he has the same name. But he's pretty good by now at positive self-talk. So he knows that he is nothing at all like his dad. He's very nice to everyone around him, and he's a very gentle boy that wouldn't hurt a fly. So he just reminds himself of that and how, how close he is with his mom and sisters, and that really helps him. Um, and that, that's also what he did on the first day of school. Wow. Clarence can relate to Mario. Um, when people don't use they to refer to um, them, Clarence can get really upset even though most people refer to Clarion as a girl by accident. Some people do it on purpose because they don't understand why Clarion cares so much. This makes Clarion very uncomfortable to be around people because they don't know how others will react. But it's, it's really important to Clarion that people use they or them to refer to themselves, themselves instead of he or she and especially not it. So Clarion tends to avoid people, to avoid becoming upset. But Clarion has to be around people eventually, right? Like, they came to the potluck with all of us and hangs around people from the school that are all our, our characters come from. So has Clarion became comfortable? What coping strategies do they use? Clarion likes to exercise to calm down. They know that they have done their best to make sure that everyone around them knows how Clarion likes to be referred. So when people refer to them by he or she by accident, it isn't as big as a deal. But it's when people don't care about what Clarion prefers that they get very angry and sad. So they avoid these people that won't respect them as much as possible. <laughs> Exercising hard lets them release all of their emotions in a way that won't hurt anyone. Why does Clarion not just make people refer to them that way, the right way? Jojo would definitely use her power, and it wouldn't, wouldn't hurt anyone either, right? Um, I think Clarion views the use of their power differently from Jojo. Clarion really does not like the way that they could have people do whatever they want. Uh, Clarion just doesn't think it's right, especially when that person would not otherwise act that way. So Clarion will not use their power unless it is really serious and refuses to use their power for their own be benefit, especially. Oh, well, I can only imagine how difficult it must be for Clarion. Although Jojo doesn't have to deal with people calling her the wrong name or pronouns, she understands what it's like, feels like to have others not understand her preferences, which allow her to feel the most confident and happy. Jojo has had the same comfort item since she was a baby a teal bear named Max. To others, it looks like a silly toy that she should have outgrown many, many years ago. But what others don't see is that Max is one, the one item that is able to calm her down when she's stressed, sad, or can't sleep. 
Max means so much to her. Last week, Jojo lost Max. She could hardly sleep or eat, and she was so worried that she would never find him again. At first, she would cry while she searched around the house for him, overwhelmed with her emotions. But Jojo began to do breathing exercises to calm herself down, and once she was calm, she realized that Max was under her bed the entire time. Paige does not necessarily know how to cope because she experienced losing a parent. She misses her father and wishes that she had gotten more, some more time with him. But every time she thinks about him, she tries to always remind herself of the good memories. It's okay to not always know um, how an experience is going to affect you or how to properly handle it. The most important thing is that you focus on healing, which means understanding the trauma that you have experienced, accepting that it is or it was a part of your life, and trying to find some positive ways that your trauma contributes to your life instead of instead of acting in, in a negative way because of it. For Sage, that looks like continuing to help save the world, just like her father did, and getting good grades in school, because that's something that her father would have been very proud of her for. Wow. Thank you for sharing, everyone. That was definitely a very emotional conversation, but I'm glad we were able to trust each other and talk about our hardships. I think we should finish eating and then enjoy the park and the lake. All right, so let's wrap up, wrap up on this week's lesson and discuss what we want to hear from you and your character. First, we discussed coping mechanisms and how we can use self-soothing strategies in order to aid our handling of difficult situations in our lives. Then we did our second scenario, an outdoor potluck at the lake. So now that we're finished, we want to hear about your character's responses. What food dish did your character bring to the potluck and why? Maybe the dish reminds you of a loved one, or maybe it's a traditional food from your character's sculpture. You are each able to hear about coping strategies that our characters use. We would like to hear about what coping strategies you currently use or have used in the past in order to deal with stressful, sad, or difficult situations in your life. Do you do physical activities such as yoga or running that are mentally stimulating and help release tension? Or do you like to practice positive self-talk? Or maybe you like to do something that we never talked about in our lesson. Either way, we'd love to hear about it. Thinking about your character, what are some coping strategies that you think they would use? Please upload an explanation about what dish your character would bring, what coping strategies you use, and what coping strategies your characters may use in either picture, paragraph, or video form. Thanks for joining us this week. Bye. Bye, Bye everyone.